everyone, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Ion Hako. My name is Nicole. And my name is Joel. And today we will be dipping it with solder pots. Yes, we're going to be discussing the Hako FX300 and the FX301B. But before we get into discussing the stations themselves, let's talk about what solder pots are used for. Uh, solder pots are mostly used for melting different types of solder alloy in order to tin component leads or cable wire leads. Thank you, Joel. Uh, now you should be seeing a slide up on your screen uh, that shows the stations as well as the crucibles. Before we get into the stations, let's talk about the crucibles that come with it. There are two different sizes available. There's the 50 by 50 millimeter, which holds 0.85 kilos of solder. And there's the 75 by 75 millimeter that holds 1.2 kilos of solder. Uh, the benefit to having the bigger size crucible is that if someone has connectors that are wide, uh, it can't fit in the standard crucible, so the bigger one is a better option. Uh, along with the two different sizes that we offer, we also have two different variations. We have the standard crucible, which has a lifespan of roughly 500 hours, and the extended life crucible, which has seven times that amount at about 3,500 hours. Yep. And as you can see, moving on to the stations themselves, as you can see on each side of the station, there are screws. This is where you're able to remove and replace or perform maintenance on your crucibles and put it back in. Another thing going into maintenance that we would highly recommend would be to rotate the crucible when put it, putting it back into place. This will help the lifespan of it as the heaters are built into the sides of the station and you don't want to constantly be heating the same two sides of the crucible. Thank you, Joel. No problem. Now before we get into the FX301 digital uh, solder pot that you have in front of you, we're going to talk about the FX300 analog solder pot that we have in front of myself here. Uh, as we stated earlier, the solder pot uh, can accommodate two different crucibles. Uh, the analog comes with the standard 50 by 50 crucible and the 75 by 75 is an optional part. This has variable temperature control and is a ceramic heating element with the temperature range from 200 to 450 degrees Celsius or 400 to 840 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, since the analog version does not come with the auto temperature display like uh, the one you have in front of you, Joel, uh, it's good to take the temperature probe as I have connected to the FG100B and you can place it in to get your reading. Yeah, perfect. Now let's move on over to the FX301B, which is our digital soldering station. So first thing you're going to notice right on the front is that it has a digital display right here that reads you off the temperature, as well as giving you a couple button for menu controls. If you want to get into the menu options, I'm going to turn this guy off for now. Simply hold down the up and the down button at the same time, and we're going to turn the station back on. This brings us into our first preset which is the option to switch between Fahrenheit and Celsius. You can switch between the two by hitting the up button. For demonstration purposes, we're going to keep it at Fahrenheit. You want to lock that in by hitting the start key. Now our second menu option. This lets us cycle between the different types of solder alloy we'll be melting. Our first option is tin lead. Our second option is tin silver copper. Our third option is tin copper. And our fourth option is tin. We're working with 100% tin today, so I'm going to leave it on option four. Lock that in by hitting the start key. And now it moves us to our third menu preset. So we've got two options here. And they're about the type of crucible size we'll be working with, the 50 by 50 millimeter and 75 by 75. The first option is 50 by 50, so we're going to go ahead and lock that one in. Now, our fourth menu option is a preset timer that you can designate so many hours for the FX301B to shut down. We won't be working with this feature today, so I'm going to leave this alone at zero, and I'm going to go ahead and lock it in. Immediately, you're going to see the temperature display, and we can see that the FX301B is already climbing to reach that temperature. But if you wanted to adjust the temperature, 
hold down the Start key, and you're going to notice that the first digit will flash. You can cycle through. We're working with Fahrenheit, so again, it's going to go anywhere between 400 to 840 degrees. I'm going to work with 700 degrees for demonstration purposes only, but you can work with whatever works for your solder alloy. So you lock it in by hitting the Start key, Start key, and that'll lock in the temperature. Now you're going to start to see it blink, and the FX31B will begin to climb to that designated temperature. And that's a basic overview of the FX301B. We're going to get into our demo, and since Joel has the FX301B already heating up, we're going to use the digital instead of the analog. Um, but first, we want to make sure to remind everyone, when you are working or when someone else is working with solder pots, please make sure you're safe and put on safety glasses. So before we start, we're going to put on our safety glasses. <laughs> Stunning. Oh yes, I think we're ready. All right. So for this demonstration, I'm going to be working with this pre-cut wire here. It's been pre-stripped already. It's 22 gauge wire. And we've got a nice pull of flux going right here, which you're going to want to dip first. Why are you dipping it into the flux first? Oh, because, well, flux is our friend, uh, but mostly flux is used for removing metal oxides from the surface of leads uh, or components, uh, as well as preventing further oxides from building on the surface. Got it. All right, so, oh, actually, before I dip into this flux, okay. looking at our stationery here at the FX-01B, you want to clear off this dross that we've got going on here at this little top of the pool. Oh, doesn't that just look nice? It looks lovely. So we clean off this dross, which is just oxidized solder. So you're cleaning off the dross. I notice on the side of the station there's a little accessory. What is that used for? Oh, this is our little oh. J-shaped solder collector right there. Okay. Uh, it's used for maintenance. You can actually move it around to any side of the station. It comes right off, so it makes cleaning up a lot easier, and you can dispose of that solder properly. Got it. All right. So now that that's cleaned off, Gonna dip right here into some flux. Nice, good. So now, when we're putting our wire in, you want to have the tip touch the very top, let the solder wick up, and then dip down. You don't want to go all the way to the insulation, as you don't want that solder getting into the insulation. And there you go. Oh, isn't that perfect right there? Nice job, Joel. See that? Yes. You want to give a shot? All right, well, since you did a wire, I have a component in front of me, so I'm gonna take the component, and I'm also gonna use flux, since flux is our friend, and I'm just gonna go ahead and place that on. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now you said, when I put it down. Let the solder wick up first, touch the surface, not dip. There you go. All right, oh, and as you can see, that's I did it. Way to go. Appreciate the coaching. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> and if he can do it, you, you can, can do, do it. it. I think we're at the end. It's Friday. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining us. And until next time, make sure you remember, keep, keep your, your eye, eye on Hako. Hako.